Hello everyone, this is Yorkin here, and boy am I excited to show you my new Centenary Piston Tape ROM. Uh, Centenary, I think it's pronounced Centenary. But if you all recall, before I made a Quinary Piston Tape ROM, and now I have Centenary. So basically it's base 6. So <clears throat> I figured out how to make it so that um, a single block can hold 6 positions now instead of just 1. So basic, uh, so base, and I basically just use the sticky pistons. Uh, like I did, like they did in my uh, primary piston tape ROM. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> this is uh, yeah, this is. Um, I'll show you how to. I'll show you guys how to make the reader in just a second. Um, as far as the uh, the rest of it goes, like the um, just the belt, just the belt itself. I'm pretty darn sure somebody can come up with a better belt design because this one's just kind of. This is just something that. To make it to make this thing presentable, to make it so that I can just push a button and uh, it works. All right, cool. So I'm just so I'm just gonna go show you how to make the reader now. So in this piston tape ROM, uh, the, the each block can hold six positions. Most of these positions are held by uh, sticky t uh, sticky pistons. And let's say the belt is going in this direction. Oops. Let's say the belt is going in this direction. Uh, so the, the positions I can hold are this direction, this direction. This direction, this direction, and it can also hold um, any current carrying block, as well as as well as glass. So basically, so this is so these are the six positions I can hold. Um, basically, what happens is this will return no signal whatsoever, and all of these will return a signal in a different way. Um, so here's a little uh, small little setup here. <coughs> And the main difficulty in doing this was uh, making it so that uh, the current carrying block and one of these pistons, um, you can decipher the current that's coming from one of the blocks and from the, one of the pistons. And uh, how I did that was I basically took a, um, I took a, I had a, I had a sticky piston facing in this direction and two blocks here. So what ha so what happens? Um, if there's a current carrying block here and it then becomes powered, it'll move this piston out right here. And then if there's a, um, so, and then if there's a uh, sticky piston, and if there's one of the sticky pistons that's facing sideways, it'll push it over here. And then there will be a power source uh, powering this block, which will then push out a piston, causing it to create a current. And then I, and then it, I, and then it creates different outputs. So if that makes sense, then the rest of this should hopefully make sense. Okay, and then basically the way I was able to um, make it so that this can still be part of a belt moving in this direction was um, there's a sticky piston over here, so that the belt is going through this, so the belt that the belt is going through this way. Um, and then once it gets the once it gets the block it wants to read it, just pushes it in here, and then once it wants to read a different block, it pushes it pulls it back in. And then the and then the belt just shifts over and it pushes it back in again. Uh, so the main thing about this is just the timing of <clears throat> when these pistons have to go uh, and when these pistons have to uh, move so that they can get back to their original position. And the way I did that initially, this is the way I did it initially. It's not the best, but it works. Um, is that I had three blocks here. Repeater going to each one, delay of three, and then going into there, delay of three, and having redstone torches here, here, and here, so that when I want this thing to, um, when I want this thing to retract itself, I just turn it on, and it retracts them all so that it can get, so that this piston is now back in the belt, and it can now read a different block, such as the current carrying block, and once this turns back off, it then re and it now reads the it now reads the new block. So, <clears throat> basically all this, uh, and then the rest of this is pretty much straightforward. So if there's a, so if there's a, uh, if there's a, um, if there's a piston in here facing this way, then you put a block here, so it's there, a torch here, and then just something to isolate the output. And then the last one, and uh, the last one that's uh, facing horizontally is this one. And this block's already here, so that's going to be good. Um, and then all I have to do is just do this again. I select the output, 
definitely we don't want it that way. And then we got something output that way. And then the last the last position is going upwards, which is this way. And there's a block here, and then just something that isolates the output here. And one of the problems with this uh, setup right here, actually I'm not even done with the setup yet. So uh, normally I would I would have done I would have done just this. Around this I don't need this overlay. Because um, if this because when this because uh, when this face is up, it should just power the block, and then when it's when well, this is a depowered, should just, it or when this is powered, it should just come back down. But there is a glitch, so that if so that if I try to retract the piston now, it'll stay in that position. So I had to make it so that um, this uh, this um, block reader right here, it has to turn off when you want to move the pistons. So all you need to do that is this. Oops. So I have to do it. So so now all I have to do is this, and then once you put it in there, it'll turn off so that you can retract the piston. And that's basically all the readers right there. So uh, let's see. So side facing piston right here. And it creates the output here. Uh, here's the front facing piston. Come on. There we go. This one powers that one. Here's the uh, side facing block. Powers this one. And the up facing block I just showed you, but I'll show you again just for the heck of it. Here. There we go. And then the current carrying block, which is, I'm just going to use stone brick blocks for here. So that's that output, and then of course, just glass. Just doesn't give you, which again doesn't give you any signal. So that would basically be like zero, and the rest of them would be like one, two, three, four, and five. So that's basically it. Uh, one last thing I would like to add is that for the uh, timings for these pistons here, uh, there are two different. Uh, let's just say that this is the uh, piston that the belt's going through here. And then this one pushes the piston out here, and then this is, just happens to be a side-facing piston for this piston here to read the output. So there are two different main, there are two different ways of doing this that I found. Uh, this is this is the conventional way that I showed you earlier. Um, the problem with this is it's a lot slower. So I came up with this one, which is a lot more complicated, but it is faster, as you can see here. Oops, there's gonna be a problem here. Uh, why is there a problem? Why always the problems? Yeah, that's that. That is one of the things about this is uh, it, it doesn't work over here for some reason, but it works on this one perfectly fine. It's the exact same setup, but it is faster. So if you can get it working, then it does really well. But if it's uh, if you can't get it working for whatever reason, then you can just go with the other one. It's a lot sim. The other one's a lot simpler, but it is slower. If you need, if you want speed here. I go with this one. Um, so basically, you can just freeze the video or just kind of go back and look at how this works exactly. I don't think I'm going to show you how to do it. You can just figure it out. So that's basically it. Thanks for watching. Uh, there was just a couple of uh, last minute things I wanted to add. Uh, one of them well, on my last video, a lot of people asked, well, what can you use something like this for? Uh, there are a few things that you can use this for. Um, I have no idea about, I don't have any specifics of what you can use this for, but one of the things you can use it for, uh, you can use it for high, sen the high density memory, because, uh, I mean, you can hold six positions in just one block versus, versus one and zero. And that, if you can utilize it well, you can do things really good with it. Um, that's not the best way to say that. But, <clears throat> and, there's a few, and so you can use it to uh, program certain things, like program certain events. If you have happen to have like five event different events uh, that you need to do, do in a specific sequence, you can use this thing. Um, and just use your imagination. I can't really think of anything too specific. And one last and uh, 
what else was I going to say? I was also going to say, uh, oh yes, yeah, so I had an, I did do have an idea for a Space 7 Quinary Pacente Braum. Uh, it's just an idea right now, I haven't tested it. Uh, and it probably won't even work. And I have determined that Base 8 will definitely be impossible, so... Which kind of sucks. Uh, unless somebody else can come up with one, that would be great. But I really can't think of any... I, I can't think of a way to make it Base... Uh, eight, and that's basically it. Uh, this weekend, I'm going to release a couple more videos. I have created a few redstone uh, creations over the weekend, or over the week that I want to show some people. And that's basically it. Thanks for watching.